So today we're going to be setting up a model Q46 door fan. The first thing is to figure out how you're going to carry your equipment around. And a lot of people just take the aluminum frame like this in the contracted position. They have the fan in the case and they've got their gauge in their little bag here. So the first thing that I would do here is to set this up because this is my equipment stand. And there's one strap which comes over the front here that you could use in daily operation. There's two more that you can use if you're shipping it someplace. So we just flip that little strap back, take the fan out, set it down on one side of the doorway, flip the lid down, and that's now our test stand for our equipment. So we can take our gauge in its case, set it down there. You open up the case, this little pocket back here. You notice there's a series of quick guides that uh, basically give you all the information in the written form that you need. It's very important that you follow these and keep them with you. There's also a power cord in there which we'll be using and a cloth which we'll be using as well. So we'll get that set up and ready to go. Put that back up. In this compartment we have the gauge all set up and ready to go and you probably can't see this from there but the gauge is already tubed up, wired up, ready to go and that's the way I leave it. Goes into a little pocket there. There's a little Velcro loop right here that holds the cables down, holds them firm, and so this part's ready to go. So that's all there is to that. The next step, and there's different ways of doing this, the way I do it, is I take the frame and I fit it into the doorway first so I get it up to the right size. So we can get the height first, or the width, it doesn't really matter. Or loosen off all these knobs. Take it just up to the top there, but without very much pressure on it, because we're going to have to get it back into the doorway later. Tighten these two up, just finger tight. Now we want to get the width, and if we're lucky, we can just spread it apart like that. And again, we don't want to get it too tight, we want a little bit of slack in there. Tighten that knob up, a little bit of slack in there, tighten that knob up, and now I take it out of the doorway and set it down, and i got to put the cloth over top. Now, other ways of doing this is people will leave the cloth on there, or if it's a really high door, you can take the aluminum frame and you can set it down on the side and cover the cloth that way whatever suits you. You have to find out a way of setting up this equipment that works well for you. This is one of our older cloths. Still functioning, still functional. So I just take it and whip it over the top of the aluminum frame and attach the Velcro just enough to hold it from flopping around. Now I come down to the bottom and I want to pass the cloth underneath the bottom of the frame. There's a separate quick guide that shows you all these steps. You take the Velcro, wrap it around the bottom of the frame, hold it in place. The same thing with this middle Velcro. It's going to require a fair amount of experimentation until you get fast at this and I can't say I'm fast at it in the least. But there, we've got it attached to the bottom. Now we're going to wrap it around the sides there a bit. The one thing you want to avoid here is stretching this hole out because then you won't be able to pull it back again later. So you don't want any stretch in that hole. You want it just to stay just the way it is just with the slack taken up in the cloth. The same thing is true with this. We don't want to be pulling up too much and get this hole stretched out like that. So we just want this loose, wrap it around, attach the Velcro to itself. And now we're going to try and put this whole contraption 
back into that doorway hole and hopefully it should fit in there. Now one of the important things here is that you can tap it in but you don't want to be kicking it too hard. So we've actually got it in there, we're kind of blind but we can tell that we're in the door frame and we're going to first of all get the height down. So the way I do that Land do the Velcro, loosen off the knob, push it up into the doorway while pushing down with my foot and tighten that knob, just finger tight. These knobs have really good grip so you don't have to iron grip them. And I made a little mistake there. I had the cam lever actuated so I have to release it again. That cam lever must be in the up position. Now I've got it tight. Now I'm going to actuate the cam lever and I can feel that there's some force there and that's in there nice and tight. So I'm going to come over to this side. The Velcro no longer has any real function. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to loosen it off, pull it up in the doorway. You see I'm getting like almost half an inch there. Pull it up into the doorway, put some pressure on it, tighten that knob down. i got a nice firm grip there. I'm going to do the same thing at the top. That one's a little harder because you've got to push sideways and then tighten the knob up at the same time. So I'm actually doing that by pushing this way with a knob and this way with my hand while tightening the knob. Actuate the cam lever. Now I can feel I've got some tightness there. Actuate this cam lever. I've got lots of tightness there. So I've got to do that same thing in the middle and also on the bottom. So I'm going to loosen that knob off. Tighten it into place, tighten down the knob, actuate the cam lever, pushes out, tighten this knob up, push out, tighten down the knob, actuate the cam lever. So there we go, that's the cloth in place. So now we're going to get the fan in the hole and get this strap ready to take the handle. One step that I know I forget most of the time, is to pass the red tube through the hole. This is the ideal opportunity to do it. So the red tube goes through the red panel. That's easy to remember. And you got to be real careful. You don't drop this into a puddle of water or whatever. One drop of water in the end and the day's over. Uh, you're going to make a reading, but it's going to be all wrong. So we take this, pass it through one of these holes here on this side. Thread it through so we have couple feet of slack and then take this tube and throw it around the corner out of the wind. So now we're ready to put the fan in place which we do by maneuvering it with our leg like that and then you can reach down grab the cloth and pull it up in a position around the fan like this We're just going to take the load off with this Velcro strap. Not going to accept the whole weight of the fan, just take the load off. And now we've got the fan installed. There we go. The remaining connections are the, the yellow tube, which connects to the yellow connector, so that's easy. The Ethernet style cable, we call it Ethernet because it looks like an Ethernet, but it doesn't plug into the Internet. And we also have a battery charger, which normally you don't use. We recommend that you run your DM2 on batteries if you possibly can, because that way you don't charge them all the time, they last longer. Now we just put this Velcro back on there to kind of neat it up a little bit. Take our power cord and find an outlet. I'll give you a nice long 25 foot uh, cord there. It's usually plenty long enough. You want to make sure that the cables don't dangle in front of the fan. And plug this in. We now have power. You can't see it, but a little green light comes on here, indicating there's power in the line, there's power going to the fan. So we're in good shape. So the next thing we need to do is to go over to our DM2 and do some stuff there.